Unit 2. Solomon, the Builder of the Temple. On our timeline, if we go back, we've, we're looking at the timeline a lot, and we're going to continue to look for it, especially during this next season, which the arrangement of, of so much um, and where it falls in relationship to other stuff is going to become very important going forward. But as we look at our timeline, we remember if we, we went back to the time of the cycle and the judges, this is where uh, lots of stuff happened within the nation of Israel. Um, but it was really the arrival of Samuel that transitioned from this time period into this time period, which is the one that we're looking at now, the time of the kings. And in the last module, we looked at the life of David. The life of David is so big and so important. We weren't able to really go through everything, but these are uh, just kind of some of the some of the events that we touched on. We talked we touched on Goliath, uh, his adultery with Bathsheba, and so forth. But there's a lot of events that happen in the life of David uh, that are significant. But now we're going to now continue to to look at the third of our three kings of the United Monarchy, and that is of course Solomon. So we look. We got this again. We got Saul, who was the first king of Israel, followed by David, a man after God's own heart. And now we come to Solomon, the son of David, and the builder of the temple. And we can see, if we go back to the slide we had used earlier, which is where Solomon's life kind of overlaps with some of these other lives who are significant uh, during this time, the time in First and Second Samuel, and now we're going into uh, First Kings. So what do we know about Solomon? Let's look at his life. Well, we know that he is uh, ultimately the, God, the man that God chooses to build the temple for the ark and for the people. But he's also the only king who, uh, who came to power through ancestry. He's the son of David, so he, he inherited the throne from David. But Solomon is probably best known for wisdom, for he is the author of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. So he's, very, he's, he's well known for his wisdom. In 1 Kings, we see him asking God for wisdom and God granting that request. But Solomon is also, he led the building of the temple in Jerusalem, the great and glorious temple. Uh, that became kind of the benchmark uh, accomplishment of this time period. In fact, it's kind of a symbol of the fact that Solomon's reign was at the height of the prosperity of Israel. The the days of Solomon were always looked back upon after this as the glory days. They were looked upon as when Israel was at its highest. And of course, Solomon was warned by God against idolatry and against disobedience to the covenant. God specifically spoke to him. But ultimately, we know that he didn't listen, and the kingdom is then taken from him. So if we go in and look at his life, uh, in the beginning of 1 Kings, we see David dies, and Solomon is now made king, and he asks God for wisdom. And this is uh, that scene where the women, two women came, come, to, come to him and claim that, that the baby is theirs, that this child is theirs. And he says, all right, well, just cut it in half. And then one woman says, no, 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 stop. Um, you know, give it to her, give it to her. And, and he gives it to that lady because he says, you know, clearly you were the, you were the mother because you wanted to preserve the life of the child. So that event happens during this time. But then as we shift uh, into chapters four through eight, this is where we read about the, the building of the temple. And we also read about how Israel's wealth and power increased during this time. And um, obviously, we don't have photographs of the temple, but we have a good idea of what it looked like. So uh, in, this, in this reconstruction, this drawing, you can see that there's, there's a number of really important components, um, way more than I have time to go into now. But if we look at this, the first part here, uh, this was called the outer court. This is where there were Jews and Gentiles could go. Uh, it was built, of course, by, by a huge wall. Uh, we believe only there's only one part that remains now. It's called the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Only one wall of this entire thing, because it gets destroyed, uh, still remains. But that was the, one of the outer walls of the outer court. And here you have the inner court, and this was for Jews only, and this was where, this was a place of sacrifice unto the Lord. So you see these little guys over here, these are called lavers. There was five on each side of the central building, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but there was also a number of, of altars where sacrifices were were made. And so there's a lot of different sacrifices that we read about in at the end of Exodus and Leviticus, and those were carried out here uh, in the temple. But the central uh, part, the central building was called the holy place. And this was, uh, this contained really the holy of holies or the presence of God. And so this note here from the Holman charts uh, and maps uh, from that gives us this this photo just talks a little bit about what these different altars were and uh, and how also how Solomon had built not only the temple as a place of worship but also had built a palace because he was the king and the palace looked uh, immediately over the temple so the palace was over here on the left side and and he would look upon the temple so this the, the temple of Solomon was a shining achievement in the in the nation of Israel's history. 
And that, we read about that in, in 1 Kings 4 through 8. And then in, in chapter 9, though, God makes a covenant with Solomon. And it's, and it's really important. And I wanted to look at it because it says this, and it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord, which is the temple, and the king's house, which is the palace, and all of Solomon's desire, which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And look what God says. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house, which you have built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now, if you walk, now notice which covenant's kind of in the background, right? It sounds like the Mosaic covenant. If you walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart, and in uprightness to do according to all uh, do according to all that I have commanded you and if you keep my statutes and my judgments then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever there's the davidic covenant right as i promised david your father saying you shall not fail to have a man on the throne of israel but if you or your sons at all turn from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you. But if you go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them and this house which I have consecrated for my name. I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, as for the temple which you've built, which is exalted, Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss and will say, why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? And then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and they have embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. That was a little bit long. It was nine verses, but it's really clear. God speaks this to Solomon. He says, I am with you. If you stay faithful to the covenant, I will be faithful to you, right? The, the Mosaic covenant at work here, and also with, with an eye to the Davidic covenant as well. And so, uh, of course, Solomon doesn't do that, and we see that he takes foreign wives, and he builds temples to foreign gods. This is in 1 Kings 11. They turn his heart away from the Lord. In fact, look what it says in 1 Kings 11, 1. But Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, all the neighbors, right? In fact, these were all the neighbors from the nations of whom the Lord had said, you shall not intermarry, nor they with you. Surely they will turn your hearts away after their gods. And that's exactly what happened. And look what it says. Solomon clung to these in love. So his heart was was not after God. He had given his heart over to women and to idols. And that is when God takes the kingdom away from him and he let he alerts him, he lets him know that, that it's going to split, it's going to break in half. We see this in verse 11. Uh, it says, therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, because you've done this, you've not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father, David. There's the covenant again. I will tear it out of the hand of who? Of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant, David. There we hear it again, the Davidic covenant, God being faithful again, right? And for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So if we look at the map that we had looked at previously, we have the tribes of Israel here. And then uh, this is what it looked like after the time of Joshua, after he divided the land amongst the tribes. The kingdom of Saul looked uh, was 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 this part of of the nation, and then when it became David's, David had uh, the the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah both, and then it looks like like this when it splits. You see, you have the the nation of Israel up here in the north, and then we have the land of Judah in the south, and so God is the nation is going to split now because of Solomon's idolatry because God warned him and he didn't listen and so what we want to do in the next unit is we uh, there's a, there's a number of important things that happen before the nation actually splits so join me if you would in unit 3 as we look at before the split of the nation of Israel